Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. We're glad that you have chosen to be with us as we gather once again around words and sacrament, the people of God here at St. Paul. Um, if you're a visitor with us, again, we welcome you. And uh, just a reminder to fill out uh, the, the uh, green visitor sheet uh, that, is in, um, that is in the bulletin. Please take note of all of the um, all of the worship notes um, in the um, in the bulletin, especially Holy Communion, and we won't be singing again. The council uh, decided to make that decision, um, so we will just listen to Henning's wonderful playing and and give thanks that we are blessed, so blessed with him. Um, he is back, of course, from Germany safely, and that's good. Um, family is doing well. And um, so it's, it's really good to have him back again um, here uh, with us at St. Paul. Any other announcements we need to bring before the community as we gather? Okay, seeing none then, we listen to our prelude as we light our candles. Hear and believe and experience these words of Jesus. 
your sins are forgiven. Go in peace, come and follow me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Lift up your eyes and look around. All gather together to proclaim the praise of the Lord. Your son will never set again. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Your moon will wane no more. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Your days of sorrow will end. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Whom shall we fear? The Lord is the strength of our life. Whom shall we fear? Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service that we may rejoice to be called children of God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be Let us pray. Gracious God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Send your Holy Spirit upon David as he proclaims the word, so that all who receive it will no longer dwell in the shadows, but will have the light of life. The first reading is in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. <clears throat> but now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba is in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honor, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring you off your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is this Sunday, Psalm 29, to be read responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord your gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of you, last name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon spit out of hand. And now turn in Burst forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness of the devil. The Lord shakes the wilderness of the devil. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits in front of the flood. The Lord sits in front as a king forevermore. O Lord, Give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is in the eighth chapter of Acts, beginning at the 14th verse. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, 
they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the Gospel as we say together the Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his grain. With the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. I think Jalen, do you want to come up and do you have any other? Come on up and we'll put the we'll put the, the wise men up, okay? Can you do that for me? Yeah. Come on up here. I'm gonna make you work today, okay? You wanna put them up there? Got a lot of them. Two hands there. Thank you. Okay. And you put some on the side. There you go. And you have two canes. Okay. There you go. Let's have a prayer for that. God, thank you for bringing us Jesus. Thank you for the wise men who come to the manger today, who came on Thursday, but we, we put that off until today when we gather together in worship. Be with all, Lord, who are not able to be with us. Guide them and keep them, and keep them safe in all that they do. And especially be with Jalen as she goes to school. Keep her open and reminding her of God's love for her. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. Good job. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ who was, who is, and who is to come, the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. One of the greatest gifts of the church is the gift of community. Many have termed that as family, as a word that we use to describe church. It's really a gathering of diverse people who celebrate, who are with one another, who grieve with and for one another, who worship, who pray for one another. On this baptism of our Lord Sunday, Luke's story of Jesus' baptism is almost in some ways ordinary. We get that first part of John the Baptist saying, uh, here's what's going to happen. Here's how things are going to go. I am not the Messiah, but the one who is coming is more powerful than I, and he will, will um, burn the chaff from you. He will remind you of God's love, of God's mercy, and 
God's forgiveness. And then Luke says, and Jesus was baptized. No fanfare, no certificates, no candles, nothing like that. It seems, again, as I say, almost ordinary. As people are coming to be baptized, Jesus is baptized too. Almost routine. Almost, in fact, I would suggest communal. Because Jesus, you see, is being baptized with others. He is being baptized to remind the church, in particular, of how important this visible sign of God's grace is for God's people. A reminder that we are forgiven, that we are loved, and we are set on a new path every day. Luke says, all the people were baptized, now Jesus also was baptized. Again, ordinary, routine, but it's also very, very, very communal. Jesus was baptized with others who were around him. And then, of course, and then, and then we get this wonderful opening up of the heavens and the Holy Spirit descending and this voice coming from heaven. Very imperative statements. The voice coming from heaven, the Holy Spirit coming down. And then those words at the end of the text, this is my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Beloved, with you, whom I am well pleased. It is really, in essence, an anointing divine service. Jesus has been baptized, or has been born through Mary and Joseph, and now, now this is the commission, the empowerment, the reminder of God's initiative in, in, in the world and in creation. This baby of Bethlehem is God's son, the son with whom I am well pleased. Our text all focus around baptism and community that first text that David read from Isaiah reminds us that God will be with us, that God will strengthen us, that God will give us hope as we go into the world, and we need that hope, it seems to me, these days. We need to be also reminded, I think, that we are part of a community. We are part of a community, a larger community throughout the world, of people who gather together to worship the Lord and to be reminded that that God is still with us. In our baptismal liturgy um, in the Lutheran Church, we do something that I also really appreciate from the liturgy, and that's lighting a candle. We light the candle to be reminded that we are the light of the world, that we go into the world with the light that Christ has planted within us. And we share that light, we live that light, we show that light every day. And then there's also a special time during the liturgy where we say, um, God is with you and is well pleased with you. And mark, mark that sign of the cross forever. A reminder that no matter where we go, no matter who's, what we are about, that God's sign of the cross leads us into the world. It reminds us to be the people of God out in the world, too. One of the um, images that I've sometimes used, and I think I've brought it out here several times since I've been your pastor, is that is a, a branding iron that somebody made for me in Nebraska. The, and then at the end of that branding iron is a cross. Um, I pull that out for children to remind them that they've been sealed with a cross and talk about what it
it means to be sealed with the cross of Christ forever. That no matter where we go, no matter what we do, and that leads us all throughout life and into eternal life, because that's the promise that God has given us, that God has given us through Jesus. We are signed with that cross of Christ forever. And God is well pleased with us. It may not seem like it from time to time. God calls us a son and a daughter. God reminds us that we are loved and forgiven and sent to be people in the world. We have been anointed too. And it is our commission, our empowerment, our, our reminder of God's initiative in our lives, that God is the one who moves us every day, that blesses us every day, that gives us strength to go into the world, no matter what that world may show us on our daily basis, our weekly or our month or our year. It is that sign of the cross that sets us apart, that reminds us that we are those children made in the image of God, signed with the cross of Christ forever. Luke's story of, of, of the gospel then, right after the baptism, we see uh, the genealogy um, in Luke. A reminder that this person is connected to this person, to this person, to this person, to this person, and this person being Jesus, of course, is the Son of God. That's how Luke ends the genealogy. A reminder that the Son of God is in our midst, that the light that we will celebrate, the revealing of Jesus, during this epiphany time is a reminder of that, of that light that goes into the world and that lifts us up on a daily basis. It is that light, that forgiveness, that commission, that empowerment of God's initiative that gives us strength daily. And that strength leads us out all into all aspects in, of the world. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the family of community that gather uh, in whatever way they gather, through virtual means, through these means who come to these, who, who are here in person. Lord, so many things are going on in our world and we are reminded of how stressful it can be sometimes. Remind us also of your commission, your empowerment, your initiative upon us. That you have given us Jesus daily as we go about our lives. Keep us safe, remind us always of this initiative, and uh, help us to give thanks, to give thanks daily for what you provide for us in Jesus. In your name we pray.
let us walk in the light of the Lord. As we pray for those in need, remind us that we have nothing to fear, for we belong to you. We pray especially for Madonna, Charles, Anne, Jackie, Judy, Miles, Debbie, Al, Dave, Charles, Elizabeth, and Louise. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Light of the world, shine brightly. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Share it with one another the sign.
peace be upon the abundance of your house. Send us, to, send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Magi found the infant Jesus by following his star. May you seek the Lord where he is found and call upon him while he is near. Amen. Christ Jesus is the Son of Righteousness. May his radiance bring you warmth and cheer. Amen. Light and peace are yours through Jesus Christ. May your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 